What? What? What the fuck have you made me watch? Hey, stop it. Stop it now. Oh, fucking rolling troll. So another episode of It Could Have Been a Classic. What now? Yeah, all right, I'm busy. Now piss off. What? Right, oh, I will do. Yeah, okay, right. Sorry about that. Uh, we're going to be talking about something that I've had to sit through. Uh, probably the worst TV series of all time. Uh, we're going to be discussing is there any potential within this series? And it's ultimate ridiculousness of where it could have gone. So, I introduce to you, Manimal. Right, in 1983, uh, an American adventure series created by Glenn Larson and Donald R. Boyle. It ran on NBC from September 30th to December the 17th, 1983. The show centers on the character Dr. Jonathan Trey Chase, a shape-shifting man who can turn himself into any animal he chooses, and he uses this ability to help solve crimes. Oh, God. I, all right. I've, I've got to get through this, and then we can sort of go into it. Right. For every episode except the pilot, William Conran, that were canon, uh, who also did Buck Rogers' opening narration. The opening narration that tells of Chase's wealthy present life in his early days in Africa with his missionary father. They're always wealthy, aren't they? These people, like, bored adventurer types. You know, you know get a fucking life, man. Right. Manimal, I'll, I'll listen to this, right. Dr. Jonathan Chase, wealthy, young, handsome, a man with the brightest of futures. A man with the darkest of past, from Africa's deepest recesses to the rarefied peaks of Tibet. Heir to his father's legacy and the world's darkest mysteries, Jonathan Chase, master of the secrets that divide man from animal and animal from man. Manimal. Oh, for fuck's sake. Right. Honestly, right, so basically, here we go again, right? So we've got this, like, wealthy dude that's educated who wears suits, and he, he has, like, a butler. I mean, he's got a male, like, assistant that helps him out. And this woman, uh, Melody Anderson, uh, who were in Flash Gordon, I, like, I'm a big fan of Melody Anderson. I think she's a counsellor now or something, or reading about her. She's, I think she's, a, she works at the police department and some app, some crime, and he gets involved always like a, an investigator. You know, he helps the police solve crimes. And he's got loads, he's got shit loads of money. These, these people, they always have money, don't they? You know, and they're bored, and then they decide to, yeah, let's go out and solve crimes because I've got nothing else to do. 
you know, and I can change into any animal going. So, so we sat there, right? So I remember this as a kid, it was on the BBC. And uh, first episode, uh, I, I don't know, he helped solve a crime with some mafia boss. So, well, they just solve crimes. And then every week, she gets into trouble and he turns up as a, as a fucking hamster or a, a mouse. Well, he didn't become a hamster, but he could do if he wanted to. I mean, manimal, right? It, 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 it's, it's ridiculous. I'm, I, I'm sorry. It is fucking ridiculous. So, like, he's investigating every week. She gets into trouble. And he turns up, and there's some, obviously, scheme going on, like some crime or something. And uh, he changes into an animal, you know, and that's it. I mean, normally becomes a black panther. You know, oh, he can talk to animals as well. And in his human form, he can adapt certain abilities. But this series, it just got worse as it got along. Now, we're going to get to it. Is there any potential with this? Now, like, well, it always ends up like they're investigating the crime, right? And uh, sort of like something happens, they get caught in some trap. And he says, I've just got to go behind that wall, right? And I'm going to change into an animal. And it takes them about half an hour. I mean, it goes on for ages. She's been kidnapped and he's gone round the corner to change. And I'm going to show you the transformation. Now, the effects are amazing for the time. And they were done by a special effects artist. But bloody hell, it takes them about half an hour to change into summer. You know, she's probably, in real life, she'd have been kidnapped, shot, and uh, whatever, right? Or he's out to save somebody. Hang on, I'm just going behind the wall over there. I'm going to change into a parrot, right? So what's this, honestly? Now, the good thing about Manimal, there were a couple of good things going for it, apart from Melody Anderson. Simon McCorkendale was a very good actor back in the day, and R.I.P., you will be missed. But, I mean, when he did this, I mean, this is from Glenn Larson, and I'm a massive fan of Glenn Larson. I did get to meet him at Comic-Con years ago. Now, the problem with Manimal, it, 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 it's just absolute crap. Right, but the good things are the music in this is awesome. I've got it in my head now. The music, you know, and just something about the music for this. It, it, but the music is really quite intense, and and the the program don't seem to strain to the music. You know, like represent the power of like intense viewing to watch this. Now, the second point is probably the best point is the special effects. The transformation is incredible for its time. And it was done by an award. I forgot his name, but he's, he's done loads of movies and animatronics and all this. But the transformation scenes were brilliant. I remember, because I used to watch this, I think it was on a Monday night or Tuesday on BBC Two, about half past seven. And, and we, everybody watched it. You know, I mean, I watched it when it was on. I thought, oh, I, I, were, I were about 20. Now we're about 18, 19 at the time. And I thought, oh, God, Manimal. I remember being around my mates and he said, Manimal's on. We had a cup of tea and watched it. I mean, that's sad. It really is. But it's uh, it, it's such a shame. Now, now you're going to ask, like, we've covered the story. Basically, he solves a crime, saves her. She helps him. He becomes a fucking hamster or uh, whatever. And he normally becomes a black panther and, and beats up all criminals 
And then you've got the daft uh, police officer boss that can't understand how to solve the crime. And that's it. You know, and and it were like that every week. Now, this only lasted eight episodes before the fucking canned it. And I can understand why they canned this. I really do. Now, is there any potential in this? If, say, like, Manimal came back, could it have been a classic? Could it have gone down that path? Now, you say a lot. I mean, I was talking about this from the co-host the other day on the podcast. Uh, and it's like, well, it's like, it's, a, it's like you see all this soap rip off, like the Incredible Hulk, right? And and then, like suddenly when he changes back, he's got his like two piece soap on three, but you know, you know, like that, like, as if nothing's happened. Do you know what I mean? And, and it's stuff like that. And I think with with today's audience, I mean, I've you know sat through a few clips of this, and what I remember of it, it is terrible. Now, is there any potential of a, an animal changing superhero? Uh, well, there's one in DC. There's, they've got an animal superhero in that. An animal, so uh, a, a dude uh, uh, can change into stuff. I mean, I think this. Now, I probably get shot down for this, but there could be some in this, but on another level. Now that he got his powers from his dad in Africa, right, and Tibet, that. Maybe if Manimal went down a path of something supernatural. Do you know what I mean? Like, 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 say, like, he fought vampires or a werewolf, and he could change. He could change into like any sort of creature, from a hamster to a dragon. I don't know, but there's something there. And the music's great, but I think it, it, I think what let this down for me is is, is fighting standard criminals. It's like in eighties, it, 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 it a lot of the TV they were all quite similar, weren't they? The fight the the villains, and they were all pretty. You know, it was either a murderer or a scam artist or somebody above the law, and he got the going and sort it out. It was all that theme, but I think Manimal, if it had gone down the path of taking on like. How would you say out of this world threats? You know, I think it could have worked. <laughs> I, I, I don't. But like, if it were brought back today, like you, you know, there's a werewolf on the loose, so he becomes a werewolf. He can just change into one, you know. And it and there's a big fight with it, or like some kind of like people that can do weird stuff, and he fights them. That's his job is to protect mankind from this sort of thing and he's been given the powers of the manimal to take it on now now he could have met a female manimal you know i mean yeah i mean whoever it'd be womanal I, I don't know what would they call it i don't know but it, it would work i think there's potential in that idea that it could have gone down that path but then again it's the 80s isn't it that it was all a bit cheesy back then i mean trust me i lived it so I think it could have gone there. But I mean, the sheer ridiculousness of this series, it, 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 I have to say, it, it, could it have been a classic? Fucking no. Right? I, I think there's some potential in that. I really do. But it'd have to be re, rewritten and, and, and re -sort. I mean, the transformation, like, it could have been hyper-accelerated or it could be some, like, mystical way of, changing into a creature like he's got an amulet or some like a bracelet something that sort of goes down that path do you know what i mean but i mean it, it, it's it's like it's, it just gets like comes from behind one has got his clothes on i mean there's one episode where he goes undercover as a parrot in a cage listening to a conversation with the villains they don't know he's in a cage as a fucking parrot that's when you just give up. That's when you get to the point, I'm not sticking with this anymore. But there is something in the mix. It's there. So, did Ballymull pass this week? No. A big no. But, but, there's something there. I don't know what you think about this review, because I've done this pretty quick. I only wrote up a bit. Uh, because I, you know, it just bloody annoys me. So that's my thing 
of Manimal. I, I, I have to say, I, I, you know, you know, Melody Anderson's a babe, and Simon McCorkindale was a great actor. But Glenn Larson, what were you thinking about? Really, you create masterpieces like fucking Battlestar Galactica, Knight Rider, and even Highwayman's bad. And I love Highwayman, but this. I suppose we have to bear some stuff in life. I suppose a Malibu's one of them. But I have discussed there is just a bit there, isn't there? I mean, come on, let's not totally savage it. But after he became the parrot in the cage, it, it, that's when you just give up. I mean, it's hilarious and I couldn't stop laughing. But I mean, there is one scene where there's this villain thinks he's got away with it or something and he's sat on his water bed it's swimming pool but then just to end as a shark in there it's become a fucking shark in a swimming pool <laughs> i mean can you believe this i mean what if he becomes a dog and he gets pounded and they put him in dog pound how's he going to explain when you're going to there's a fella sat there in a cage in a soap going what are you doing in dog cage mate <laughs> i'm sorry manimal you've failed uh, yeah, truly the worst TV set. Well, it, it's in the top five, but I will say the cool points out the music is awesome. Now, before I go, in the 90s, I'll give this to Simon McCorkendale, and this is why I like the guy. He came back in the 90s to team up with Nightman in the TV series Nightman. Now, I've covered Nightman, but they blocked it globally. And I like Nightman, they blocked it so. I can't show it unless maybe if you're a subscriber, you can watch it. I don't know. But he teamed up, and, and that was about 10 years, 12 years later. Good good on Sam McCorkinell for coming back to do it. So I show me he had a lot of passion for this, you know, this series. So that's it, really. So just in case, look at your cat, look at your dog. If you've got a parrot in a cage, it could be him, you know. I'll see you on the next episode. And, all right, all right. I'm going. I'm going. Thank you for watching. Dr. Jonathan Chase. Wealthy, young, handsome. A man with the brightest of futures. A man with the darkest of pasts. From Africa's deepest recesses to the rarefied peaks of Tibet, Heir to his father's legacy and the world's darkest mysteries. My son, you must have faith and learn. This is not the end. This is the beginning. Jonathan Chase, master of the secrets that divide man from animal. Animal from man. Wow! Manimals.